What's going on, everybody? We are back. We got, uh, sorry, episode number 173 of the Club and Sub podcast. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking UFC Vegas 90. Uh, had main event here. It's Chris Curtis. He's very, it's Brendan Allen. It's their second fight. Uh, Chris Curtis obviously knocked him out in the first iteration. Guys, please, guys, if you like the show, like- show, drop a like, drop a like subscribe. subscribe. It would really, it would help, really us help, us out. help us out. I'm getting, I'm like getting crazy, like crazy feedback, feedback, feedback here, right here right now. Um, um Lag, do you, Lags, get, an you get an echo in here? Lags? That, oh, I think it was Lags that might have had it open. That was really weird. Everybody else hear me clear right now? No, you, no, no, uh, no lag here? All right. Anyway, so, anyway, <laughs> so, lags, lags. I'm getting an echo every I'm time. I'm getting an echo every right time now. you're on right now. I can hear you. I can hear an echo. I, I know you guys can hear me. I'm sorry. I'm getting him like in my ear through his screen. Um. All right. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Drop a like, subscribe, please. It'll help us out. I promise. We will try to not have these tech problems going forward. Liam knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Dick's Insider, say it in the chat. Uh, OnlyFans fade on Bill Algeo and Anton Tercali. I played Tercali live, um, which sucked. <laughs> and I obviously played Bill pretty large. That I mean, we always knew there was going to be danger early in that fight. I mean, the guy's just always been very, very durable. And honestly, I'll say this. I think the stop was bad, but I don't – I. The people are like, ah, it's the worst stop I've ever seen. Nah, I mean, there's been worse, worse stoppages than that. Uh, I have no real problem with it. Hold on, Lags is back. Lags. Yep, yep, good now. Okay, sorry I was getting my echo of my voice in my head from from your screen. Oh, sorry about that. No, was, uh, I was having issues with my phone. Sorry about that. But anyway, anyway, so we, um, so yeah, I'll, we'll go through last week real quick here. Uh, pretty frustrating event for me. I lost two and a half units. Um, it's frustrating because I thought my reads in the aggregate were pretty good. A um, couple bad breaks. You know, I had Dumas and Ruzaboyev over and goes the distance. Obviously, it ended in round one. I actually felt the pace was pretty good um, for the over, before the eye poke, and then it just seemed like Dumas melted. Uh, I had the over four and a half rounds in Blanchfield, um, Emma Known. That obviously was pretty free. I had burned sub one very small for 0.2 units. That didn't hit. And then I had this one really fucking killed me. Over one and a half rounds, minus 115, Burns and ours. And Burns just going full yeah. fucking quit job there. Like, come on, man. Like, that that was – that wasn't even much of a pace, you know? Like, he, he no. just completely gave up on the fight. Um, but that's Herbert Burns, you know? It is what it is. Um, I had Dennis Bazooka to win a unit and a half, minus 113. It went more or less so I thought. I had Cheedy to win a unit and a half at minus 139. Again, um, skill gap is huge there. And then, yeah, like I was just talking about before lags popped back in. I had four and a half units on Bill Algeo, minus 180. He closed minus 300. Uh, I must have yeah. the worst luck with gigantic CLV in history, to be honest, at this point. But I don't know. I, I don't take much from it. I knew the first round would be tough. I thought that he should have let him go a little longer. Um. I'm pretty confident that pace was way too high for Nelson to keep. Like I actually was pretty encouraged with the first round up until Bill got hurt bad. Uh, I, then I had Weidman for a unit and a half for like an average price of plus 237. I mean, that was pretty good. And then I had two and a half units on Vicente Luque minus 110. And (laughs) um, I, I had Luque minus 110 and it's funny because watching it live, I was sitting in Boardwalk Hall with Marcus and John Kelly. And when he went down like that, we were all just kind of like, he had to have gotten hurt, right? Like, like, what just happened? Like, he definitely, he must have gotten hurt standing. But then rewatching it back in my room, it's like, he just quit. And so I, I, I bet on it because I, I thought the idea that Luke was totally shot was Probably not accurate, but no, I mean, it is. It's pretty clear the guy doesn't really want to take damage anymore. I mean, he just, he didn't have his way and he just wanted out of there. So yeah, I mean, pretty frustrating evening. Um, minus two and a half units, a lot of near misses there. Just needed a couple things to go differently, but them's the breaks. Uh, close Q1 up a unit and a half um, so far on pre So 
Hopefully we do some more damage in Q2. Uh, Lags, how was your uh, how was your week? Not great either. So I was down about 4.3 units, and it mainly came down to uh, – so I had both Aaron Blanchfield in the main event, which obviously looked horrendous in hindsight. Um, and then I also had Bill Algeo to close out a parlay. Again, I think the stoppage was bad. Don't think it was horrendous by any means, but he was eating a lot of unanswered shots, so I get it. And I just I had, don't know. Like, I mean, he, it seems like he doesn't want to fight anymore. Like that that's what it seems like to me, you know? Oh, I thought you were talking about Algeo. I was I didn't look at the No, comments, Luke, sorry. Luke. I'm saying I think he just he doesn't want to fight anymore. Like that seems Yeah. I I I can't even cuz it's not even like I mean, there was a lot of space on top. Buckley wasn't like mounting him. He kind of was right. just postured up in guard. Like Luke could have easily pushed away and he was just kind of cool to shell up. And then as soon as the fight ended, he just popped right up. I was just like, what what the fuck just happened? Um not and great. Then, not great. Yeah. And then the other two bets, I had the under one and a half in the Ebo Turkali fight. Again, not great. Minus 120, but I had cheating money line as well. So, yeah. Yeah. That week. was nice. Looking to bounce back. Yeah. Well, Hopefully. this week, this is a kind of a cool card. I don't know if I'll be live for it. I am going to Mexico first thing tomorrow morning. Wow. I was going to do a PFL show tomorrow, but I'm flying. So, I'll drop some PFL picks at the end of this. But, um, yeah. Let's jump in here. First fight of the night, Melissa Tanya Mullins, formerly Melissa Dixon, now divorced from what I understand. She is coming off her first win against Arena Alexeva. She's taken on Nora Cornell, who won a fairly controversial split decision against Jocelyn Edwards in her debut in the UFC France card. Current price, <coughs> Mullins minus 350, comeback Cornell plus 285. You have any strong thoughts here? Personally, this didn't take a lot of tape for me to realize that Cornhole is pretty fucked here. Like, she's a bad defensive grappler, and I feel like Mullins, again, good offensive grappler. She's pretty well-rounded. I think she should have no issues here. I'm torn. I don't really want to bet Nora Cornell, though. You know, getting stuck on bottom like she did against Jocelyn Edwards, against someone that's going to try and grapple her, isn't yeah. something I really want to get behind. At the same time, looking at Dixon – or Mullins, sorry – I mean, she did get nine minutes of control in her first fight, but she didn't get a single take a single takedown in that fight. I, I don't think she's a very good wrestler. She is Euro, so I don't really trust her wrestling to begin with there. And Cornell is pretty strong. So I, I don't I don't really think it's gonna be like super easy for her. Like I think the market is saying she gets the top position fairly easily here, whereas I kind of am like Maybe like I know Edwards isn't the best wrestler, but she's a good athlete. And she's very physically strong, and and she's a lot more experienced than Mullins is. Mullins is thirty four years old. You know this is not a or thirty two years old a, a young prospect here. She's fairly inexperienced and she's fairly old. So I'm a little skeptical of the line. I think on the feet, Cornell has you know, the much better hands here. She's got a lot more power on the feet than Mullins does. Obviously, Alex Eva dropped her in her last fight. But again, Cornell kind of similar. She's older too, 34, and not very experienced. And so with all that said, the reason I just don't have any interest in like playing the fight, it's just like this dynamic. I know Cornell is a bad grappler. And if Dixon is able to get takedown, she's going to look minus 1,000, whereas Cornell's upside is probably like plus 150 to plus 200. So I'm okay with the pass here. I just, I, I don't, I don't think it's that easy of a fight for uh, Mullins personally. Moving on though, we got Dylan Buck uh, making, actually we got a two Dana White's contender series debutants here. We got Dylan Buck. He is seven and two and he's currently minus 148. And he's taken on the former kickboxer, glory kickboxer, Cesar Almeida, current price on Almeida, Plus 128. Um, interesting fight. I I briefly considered playing Almeida when he got up to about plus 150. I really don't like Dylan Buck's game whatsoever. He's, I think he's slow. I don't think, despite, you know, being shredded, I don't actually think he is a great athlete personally. He comes from a wrestling background, but insofar as I can see, his wrestling isn't actually that yeah. great it's really it's more great. of like yeah he, he tries to like pin you to the fence and then just kind of throw knees and like rabbit punches in the clinch stuff like that and you know that kind of stuff's just not scoring that well in 2024 
even in top position, he's okay. But the only guys he's really dominated there are, you know, just complete wet blankets. You know, they're just very, very easy fighters to grapple. So I, I'm very skeptical about Bucca because I don't think he's a great grappler. I don't really like his style at all. I think the best thing I can say about Bucca is he's very young. I think he's only 24 years old. Conversely, Cesar Almeida, obviously, you know, it's a guy who once upon a time beat Alex Pereira in kickboxing. He's had a bunch of high-level kickboxing fights. And surprisingly, uh, you know, the jiu-jitsu guy he fought on Contender Series tried to grapple him very hard, and Almeida outgrappled um, Almeida outgrappled him in that fight, which I found very impressive. The other side of that coin is I actually didn't think for a guy who comes from that kickboxing background, I wasn't particularly impressed with his striking. Uh, he just seemed very, very stationary, kind of easy to hit in extended exchanges. He struck me as one of these guys who in kickboxing, you know, kind of relies on length and like high guard to play defense instead of using his head at all. And, and that concerns me. Yeah. Um, it, it's a weird fight because I, on the one hand, while I, I was impressed, Almeida's defensive grappling impressed me on his contender series fight. I still don't think he's a very good wrestler. Like, I just think the guy he was fighting was a pretty bad wrestler himself. And so I think Bucca can get takedowns here. I think the real question is going to ultimately, in all likelihood, come down to whether or not Almeida can disengage from the clinch, though. Like, I sort of feel like Almeida should be able to work up against the fence. I am skeptical whether he can get out of the clinch, though. He doesn't seem to do a great job, you know, digging underhooks to disengage. and. And at the end of the day, Buck is very young, and I made his thirty six. So I'm happy to pass it. Um, but I think I think it's an interesting fight, and I think it's pretty competitive. What do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of honestly in the same thinking as you because, like, just looking at the line, and after coming out of tape, you're like, okay, like Budka wrestling path. All right, like he's given that wrestling path based on you know minus one fifty line, this and that, sixty percent implied. But I, like you had mentioned, not a great wrestler. But conversely, on the Almeida side, kickboxing, like, he's pretty low volume, does, real, again, relies on that power a lot, super easy to hit, like you had mentioned. I just probably think it is a close fight because he's fairly low volume, could see him get stuck against the cage. I don't think it, the takedowns are going to be very easy for Budka, so I just think it's probably a close fight. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, yeah. What's 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 uh, the over here? GTD, yeah. Because I don't think – I think Almeida finishing is probably the only – well, Bucca could sub him, I guess. Um, Dixon Sider saying he's hearing rumblings about made a sub. I'd be a little surprised by that, to be quite yeah. honest. But, but we'll see. Yeah, GTD is um, 140. Minus 140. Anyway, moving on. Uh, cooler fight here. I have a fairly strong opinion here. I have a pretty big bet here. Uh, we got Dan Argetta. He's taken on... John Matsumoto, uh, I have two and a half units on Argetta, like average price, like plus 155. Current price, actually the best you can get on Argetta right now out there is plus 150 um, if you have a MyBookie account. But I don't know how many people use MyBookie <laughs> these days. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's also some 146s, 140s. But current line is Matsumoto minus 157. The comeback on Argetta plus 137. I actually kind of line Argetta a small favorite in this fight, or at worst pick him. Like kind of the range, the distribution of what I think the line should be is somewhere between uh, Argetta minus 125 and Matsumoto minus 150. Um, I guess I just – look, John Matsumoto, he looks like a pretty good striker to me. Decent athlete, okay movement. He's got pretty crisp hands, and he's got decent jiu-jitsu. He seems like a decent prospect. He's a young, young guy. I think he's only 24, if I'm not mistaken. And so I think he's a decent talent. Uh, the issue I have is, one, the level of competition he's fought has been very, very low. Two, I don't think this guy is the best wrestler. You know, I saw a jiu-jitsu guy kind of wrestling him a couple fights ago in LFA. Um, but if you go back to his last fight in the Contender Series, now, he looked very good in that fight against Casey Tanner, who is a wrestler. But Casey Tanner decided, for whatever reason, instead of wrestling, he was going to bite the mouthpiece with this guy for the first 11 or 12 minutes of the fight. Um, once he started getting proactive about attacking the takedowns, they started coming pretty easily and he was able to kind of just get decent top time. I don't think Matsumoto looked great on bottom. Um, his get-ups are okay, but I don't – it was nothing that really blew me away. And now he's fighting a guy in Dan Argetta who everybody in the market was betting last fight against Miles Johns up at minus 180. Um, Miles Johns was a nightmare matchup for Argetta. I bet him in that spot. He, I mean – 
Miles Johns, elite defense, <laughs> elite defensive wrestler, you know, decent jujitsu, very good power, good boxing. Obviously, with Argetta, the thing you worry about is the dude just walks forward, hands down with his chin in the air. But he's got great, great cardio. He brings intense pressure, and he's a very good wrestler. You know, people, you forget with because he lost to Johns uh, that you know he took Johns back early in that fight. He took him down a bunch of times in that fight, and Johns is very, very difficult to take down. Uh, going back prior to that, the fight before, it was a no contest with Ronnie Lawrence, a good wrestler himself, and Argetta was just beating his ass the entire fight. Prior to that, he fought Nick Aguirre, who's a black belt, and he got 10 and a half minutes of top time. Uh, even the Damon Jackson fight, he held his own, and he was massively outsized in that fight on like three days' notice. Argetta's a good wrestler. He's a good wrestler. He's got pretty good jiu-jitsu. I don't know if his jiu-jitsu is as good as Matsumoto's, but I, I don't think Matsumoto really can... <laughs> I don't know if Matsumoto can really threaten Argetta too much with submissions. I'd be a little bit surprised. Uh, and so ultimately, to me, it comes down to can Argetta get him down? And I, th I should say, I know we can get him down here. It's like, can Matsumoto disengage? Maybe he has before, but Argetta is the best grappler, in my opinion. He's fought by a, a fairly wide margin. And in my opinion, we've seen Argetta get to dominant positions against much better defensive grapplers than Matsumoto. Plus, you know, Argetta's gas tank's not something I'm concerned about. You know he can push a pace. And he's just been fighting a much higher level of competition here. So I lean Argetta here. I think he should be a slight fave. Um, yeah, I'm on him pretty big. What do you think, Legs? Leaning a little way, a little bit on the other side. And I know, going head-to-head -head here. But again, no bet here for me. But I just don't – I don't value Argetta's control grappling. His wrestling, again, decent. And I don't think he has – I know you're going to say he's got decent cardio. I don't think he's got the best cardio personally. may not even matter here in this spot, but – I think Matsumoto on the feet is much better striker here. And I think he can, again, hold his own. Yeah, I mean, I agree. He's better on the feet. If Dan gets stuck yeah. standing with him, he's pretty fucked here. That's I, It's hard to see Dan winning a striking fight um, other than so – Wow. AWMD saying Matsumoto, wow. lock. Who did he say was a lock last week? Um, He gave us someone up. last week. AW, who was the lock last week? I can't remember who it was. Uh, Anyway, moving on. Go back and look. Go ahead. We got Cynthia Calvillo. She's taking on Piera Rodriguez. Current price, Rodriguez minus 132. Come back on Calvillo, plus 112. What are your thoughts here? Uh, for First of all, real quick, was it Buckley by chance? Bazooka. No, Bazooka. Oh, Bazooka was I'm a wrong. lock. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um. First off, I'll say this. I have a feeling you have a bet on Calvillo before anything. I yeah. do. Yeah, this is classic John's spot, 100%. Uh, but yeah, I Losing mean, money on Cynthia Calvillo? It's yes. one of my passions. Exactly. <laughs> Calvillo sub two, John? Are you betting that too? <laughs> I might. I'm, well, well I'll, I'll get into it in a second. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I mean, Calvillo is definitely the better striker here by far, and I think that's kind of where you would – lean if you were going to be like all right she's not rest this and that like she's the better striker than pierre rodriguez 100 percent. but like more often than not i feel like it is just a close fight on optics the volume versus the power of Piera. i don't think either is going to have a ton of grappling success obviously we know calvillo doesn't really push it herself but i don't think pierre is going to be taking her down so i think we just got a close fight on the feet yeah it's an interesting fight uh i have a unit and a half on calvillo like plus 145 i capped it um Pick them personally. Good line, yeah, that, yeah. But but like, it's a weird fight because on paper, I think Calvillo's got all the tools in the world to win this fight. You know, Calvillo just lost a split decision to Lupe Godinez. Um, she outlanded her by twenty strikes in that fight. I mean, you just look at the women Calvillo's been fighting recently on this losing streak, and it's like they're they're outside of the Andrade fight. They've mostly been competitive fights, and these are all women that would be pretty significant favorites against Piero Rodriguez. Um, I think Calvillo's going to have the better volume in all likelihood. I think she's got the better cardio in all likelihood. And I think if she gets on top here, she's very, very likely to just maul her. I mean, Calvillo is like world-class from top position, and Piero is quite horrible on bottom. But what concerns me a bit – well, first of all, Calvillo is 36 years old. That's a concern. Second of all, she hasn't really been as proactive about wrestling as I'd like. You know, if you told me 
Calvillo attempts six to 10 takedowns here, I probably make her like minus 200. Cause if she attempts that many takedowns, you have to figure she gets two to three. And if she's getting two to three takedowns, I mean, she's winning this fight. That might but even be two rounds. Three right. Rounds. Yeah. Like, two like, takedowns. yeah. I, I, I don't think Pierre is getting up from Calvillo, honestly, if she gets on top of her, but she isn't, hasn't been that proactive about it. She is getting older. The one thing I'll say about Pierre that I think is good is she is very, very physically strong. She's a good athlete. Um, she's got a low base and she's a very, very physically strong woman. Um, and so I don't really know how many takedowns I expect Calvillo to attempt and striking. I agree with you. I think Calvillo is a better striker than Pierre is, but the other side of that equation is Pierre, I think throws with a lot more heat than Calvillo does. And so, yeah, way more. you know, yeah. And we just saw it last fight, right? Calvillo out on the numbers outlanded loopy by 20, 20, 25 strikes and lost so the decision. Close. Just, yeah, yeah, but it was Loopy throwing harder, you know? Right. Yep. And so I think that's a reasonably live outcome here. Plus, there's obviously with Calvillo being 36, there's a lot of, I shouldn't say upside, I should say downside to her potentially, you know, losing more of a step. So, plus, as Ben just said in the chat, Calvillo is addicted to fighting suboptimally. I, I tend to agree, agree with that. So, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of concerns on the Calvillo side. For me, it's just like, I feel like her being a dog when she has got like pretty decent submission upside and decent, you know, just significant top time upside makes the line, makes her being an underdog a bit silly. But I can't say I, I was having an argument with somebody this week or having a chat with somebody this week who's like, I think yeah. Calvillo is all tools to be like minus 300 here. It's like, I agree. But like when, when, when? like that, we haven't seen right. her come out with that game plan since like Pollyanna Botelio way back in the day, you know? So, you know, and, and not even to like go on a tangent here. Like this is kind of like what I was hearing a lot last week. Oh man, Loopy's got all the skills, all the skills in the world. super well rounded, except she doesn't have a fight IQ at all. So it's like, and right. So we're always talking about, you know, we can, we, oh, if she does this, if she does that and same with Calvillo. Oh, if she wrestles, if, you know, if she proactively grapples a little more, maybe she looks like a bigger favorite, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. Like my thing happen. was like around plus plus one fifty. it's like, I'm fine with that in a striking fight, to be honest, you know, having that yeah. number. Um, That's but fine. like at, at, pick, at near plus pick, 15. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, you kind of want a bit more. A little at, I don't mind ends and split. Honestly, I don't think that's, that's terrible. Depending what the price is. I'm not really sure what it is, but anyway, and moving on. And, yeah. And obviously, sorry. Well, real quick. And not that this is much anyways, but I think, you know, not that to usually I'm a guy advocating for juice in this and that, but I think the over here is even though at minus three fifty, minus three sixty, like I don't see any finish upside here. Outside, it would of be Calvillo subbing her. Top. Yep. Yeah, I but I, t- I tend to agree with you. It's decent yep. parlay material. Um, moving on. Uh, this fight just got added today. I don't know if you've looked at it. I haven't looked at it. Um, to, to I, honest, I did a quick real, real recap quick, of it right before the pod started. I was pulling up typology. I'm like, oh. We got a we got a new guy for uh, Hugo. Nice. Yeah, but I have not seen yeah. him now. Pedro Falcao taking on Victor Hugo. Um, I don't know if there's a line up for this yet. I'm I'll let checking you know. right now. Doesn't look like it. Uh, I I'll say the only. Th- I mean, I haven't even taped it. So since this just got added, um, the only thing I can really say is Falcao looks like he's only fought bums. Hugo's also only fought bums. But it's a very short notice fight. Hugo's had a full camp. I lean him. I don't. I, I can't really offer anything other than that. Uh, I don't know about you. No, no, I haven't even looked into it. So, all right. Well, we got that one out of the way quick. Uh, yep. Moving on. Cool fight though. Return <laughs> of the Iron Lady, Jermaine Durand to me. She's coming here to fight Norma Dumont, and we'll see if Big Norm can make bantamweight. Um, Tristan saying Hugo's minus 180 on bet online. Yeah, that's probably fine. I'll never bet Victor Hugo. I'll never bet someone who's just going to jump for heel hooks. That's just not a juice. That's not what I'm going to do. Um, yep. So, yeah. Um, what's going on, Narco, in the chat? Basil in the chat. What's going on, boys? Um, but, yeah. Uh, Norma Dumont, currently minus 152. The comeback on Jermaine Durandamy, plus 132. I... I I mean, Durand, I mean, you do. She's logically the side, right? I, I mean, obviously, yep. she is the the much better striker. Um, she's a much better clinch fighter. Obviously, decent sized hole on bottom, and Norma theoretically could get it there and take her down. Um, 
problem with that is Norma's not the best wrestler. Uh, and, you know, I, I do think early in the fight, Norma's got enough uh, explosion and athleticism to get her down and control her there. But GDR probably can stay safe there. I'd be surprised if she got subbed. Uh, and you expect as the fight goes on, Norma to start slowing down. I actually wouldn't be shocked if it looks like a rerun of the Rocky Pennington fight with GDR, where Norma's trying to get her in the clinch and is just spending most of it just getting eating knees and elbows in the clinch for 15 minutes. With all that said, I'm not betting GDR, though. Uh, and it, because you hear the thing. Number one, she just had a baby, as everybody knows. Um, that's, a, that's a serious, serious thing. She's 39 years old. She doesn't have much of a bottom game, and she hasn't fought in four years. So at this point, you have Norma Dumont that's – her implied percentage is 60%. And it's like, yeah, if I knew I was getting peak GDR, I'd be slamming her here. But those dynamics, the macro dynamic of GDR is so bearish here, you know, when you're trying to think about, you know, the age factor. Her fact floor just a key. in general. Yeah, the floor is so – like her floor could be like – if she comes out and looks plus 500 – like, I, I don't be, expect that totally, to happen. Oh, right. I wouldn't either. But I wouldn't be, like, totally shocked if she looked like plus 300 versus, like, it would be pretty shocking for her to look like minus 200, 250 in the spot. I agree. Personally. So, yeah. I completely agree. Like, not that she I, needs even, to look that to bet her at this current line, but. Well, the problem, I'm not saying don't bet. Like, I understand why people would bet her. Um, I don't even necessarily disagree with the logic. The problem is I found for myself, especially last year, which was a really bad year for me, I found I was kind of just like ignoring the kind of age-related macro stuff, and it rarely worked out well. Um, I think there's a reason for that. Now, look, could GDR show up and look like she did four years ago? Yeah, she could. Do I think that's likely at 39? Probably not. Does the fact that she just had a kid probably make it more likely that she's going to show up worse? Probably. Um, on top of which we know if she ends up on bottom, she's probably not getting up like that. Those are, they're just things I don't really want to get behind here. I understand the GDR love here. She's the only side I could bet, but I'm passing. What about you? Yeah. I mean, if you've been listening to this podcast for any time, you know that we do not like Norma. We don't think she's very good. We don't think she's a great wrestler, but again, like we've touched on with all the red flags with GDR, like to me again, I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even spend much time taping this fight. At all, because I there's just no it's GDR pass, but it's an easy pass because of the layoff, because of the kid, because of the age. It is true. Tristan's not wrong. I remember Norma getting chinned by Megan Anderson. Um, she did, but yeah, I'm with now, you. I, I, will, I, I just I, I, I will say the last thing I add. I I don't think an ends by split would be good here personally. Like I feel like if GDR is winning, it's probably more more often than not, it's probably dominant. Like honestly, I'm not gonna say she KOs her, but I feel like it's probably she's having extended time on the feet. And she's probably landing clean, hard shots yeah, on Norma. I, I agree. Because even if Norma's trying to clinch fuck her, I kind of think she is just going to land a lot of, shit. A lot of like knees in the about. clinch and a yep. lot of elbows. Like like she's yep. like I said, that was – I mean, the Pennington fight was mostly Kenny, Pennington cage pushing her. And Pennington lost 30-27 even though she was cage pushing her. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I understand the GDR bets. I'm just I'm, – I'm not doing it. What's going on, yep. Sam? Thanks for joining us, brother. And, um, last, and last thing to add on, like, the age thing, too. Like, I, again, me personally, too. Like, even this year, like, I had a decent bet on Billy Q. But, again, Billy Q's style in general, he's getting older in age, mostly relies on the durability, high-paced style, tiring guys out. And, again, got to look more into that. Like, that style eventually is going to regress. Well, it, it's just, like, one of those things, right, where it's, like, yeah, bet with Sam mentioned this, too. The last fighter we actually saw come off having a kid was Julia Avila, and she literally looked like a and, corpse. And before that, um, Nina Nunes against uh, Dern. So yeah. Win. Also looked like a <laughs> also looked like a corpse. Um, yes. Yeah. I, I I have no interest. But we have a similar fight coming up next. Though no layoff. We got Court McGee. He's taking on Alex Morono. Current price: um, Morono minus two ninety. Comeback on McGee plus two forty five. What uh? What are your thoughts here, legs? You like Again, McGee? Side? I, I could only bet McGee. At this price, but it's like yeah. he kind of seems shot to bits. I mean, I he's very old. Don't get me wrong. I think Morona probably more often than not. I mean, has the skill has the skills here. Like I don't. 
The only thing for me would be the slight chin concern for Morono. Like other than that, I not that I would lay minus three hundred on Morono, but I feel like a just big justified favorite for Morono kind of makes sense. Yeah, I, I thought I'd bet McGee um, going into tape, and I do think like stylistically, it's a pretty good fight for McGee. You know, like Morono is not the best wrestler. McGee's a no. grinder. He wants to close distance, push you against the fence, take you down. Morono is the kind of guy who could be susceptible to that kind of stuff. But again, it's like McGee's 39 years old and he's coming off of two just absolutely brutal first round knockouts. Um, I, I He's certainly not getting better at this point in his career. And, and even if you were to like bring it back to like peak court McGee was like, a 500 to sub 500 UFC fighter. Like I love court. I've bet him a bunch in his career, but like, let's be honest. So the dude who lost the decision to Diego Lima. Um, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm not just calling it. Let's just call it what it is, you know? I know. Um, yep. and, and so like, if you tell me, massive here. yeah, if you tell me I he think. comes out, well, but morono has got a high work rate and that's kind of like my point. So well, that, sorry, for that's me, what I'm saying. I think, the, I think Morono's work rate is going to be massive here. That's what I'm yeah, saying. I mean, McGee's got a good one too, but yeah. for me, like when I look at this fight, it's like the best case for core is landing a bunch of takedowns and getting a bunch of top time. I just don't know how likely he's going to be to actually control Morono here. Um, look, core can probably match his work rate on the feet, but the difference in power between the two, I think, is significant. I know Morono like looks like a bag of milk, but the guy's actually got better power than he gets credit for. Like he hurts a lot of guys. You know, he was obviously wobbling pawns all over the octagon, hurt Samuelsberger a bunch of times. I think he can hurt Morono. I, I shouldn't say I think. I think if they're standing for a protracted length of time, he will hurt McGee likely multiple times in this fight. Um, yeah, I, I mean, look. Morono, he's like a top 30-ish welterweight. Court's toward the bottom of the barrel at this point. I see the angle for him on work rate, on wrestling, and all of that. But, like, let's even look at Court McGree's last two wins. What were they? That we had Claudio Silva belongs nowhere near the UFC. And um, Ramiz Brahima. And Ramiz Brahima, who also doesn't belong in the UFC. Yes. And, 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 like, those are his only two wins in, like, a five-year period. So it's like uh, it's hard for me at like near thirty percent implied to be really enthusiastic about the thirty nine year old who got who's been knocked out viciously twice in a row, who's clearly slowing down against the guy in Morono, who's mostly been fighting competitively with top thirty guys and who actually has pop. Um, I just can't get there personally. Um, I do understand the shot; it's just not for me. Moving on, though, fucking banger fight here. Trevor Peak, Charlie the Cannibal Campbell. Current line, Campbell is minus one. Wow, big Peak steam coming in. Campbell minus 175. The comeback on Peak plus 150. What do you think here, Legs? Honestly, I feel like such a sucker after betting Peak versus Mariscal because I'm I got suckered into like oh thinking all oh, big power durability this and that, but like Peak is a god awful at MMA really. Like I'm not trying to like shit on the guy, but like Campbell should have his way here. Obviously. That everybody's going to point to the big concern with Duncan. That was pretty much a brawl. But I, to be honest with you, I, he was owning Duncan prior to the knockout and him getting hurt. So I feel like the skill discrepancy here is massive in terms of Campbell here. So I think the price is fine. And I honestly, if it kept coming in, I've, if it got the minus 150 Campbell, I'd easily play him personally. I agree that the <laughs> skill discrepancy is very large here um yep. it's hard not to agree right like i've been saying yeah. since he got to the ufc the trevor peaks like, has very few skills other than tenacity and power um charlie campbell just strikes me as not the smartest fighter though you know this is a guy who just comes out and i mean you go back and watch the chris duncan fight um obviously he was on a big stage chris duncan's got some power but, like, all the dude needed to do was be patient, pick his shots, and the fight was over. And instead, he just bit the mouthpiece, swarmed him, and got himself knocked out. And he does it a lot. You know, I, I actually Charlie Campbell is a really skilled fighter. He's a good boxer. From what I hear, he's got a pretty good jiu-jitsu game. Obviously, he's a Northeast jiu-jitsu guy, so you've got to respect that. But, yep. yeah, I mean, he's the better boxer. He's the better kicker. He's probably the better wrestler. He's got better jiu-jitsu. He's probably got better cardio. And yet 
he's going to swing in all likelihood. Now, maybe he comes out and wrestles and the sub looks giant value. I know some guys who got the plus 900 sub early in the week. That was probably pretty good. But in all likelihood, from what I've seen on tape of Charlie Campbell, and that's all we have to go off of, he's going to come out and swing. Now, do I favor him in that kind of a fight? Yes. But it also is like, like Peak hits hard. It's not, I, I know I'm not a fan of Trevor Peak, but he does hit hard. And if yeah. these guys are just going to brawl, like, do I really want to have money on, you know, tr- like, like I, I was much right, more right. comfortable. Do you want to lay almost minus 200 juice in a brawl type of a fight, right? <laughs> like, I was much more comfortable with my minus 180 on Bill Algeo last week than I would be with minus 175 on Charlie Campbell, who, like, Bill, I yeah. knew was long at least and would try to keep distance, whereas, Charlie Campbell is going to go right into the fire with him, you know, but Charlie should win. I think he's a good prospect. I think he could have a pretty good future. Um, if the guy uh, irons out, his like, like block his game blossoms a bit more, but yeah, I mean, I think Campbell knocks him out here, but I, I just, I have a feeling the fight's going to be very, very fun. And I wouldn't be shocked if peak touches his chin, to be honest. So I'm not betting this fight. Moving on. Oh, what a fight. What a fight. Walter Walker. Johnny Walker's – is he his older brother or younger brother? That I haven't looked at, to be honest with you. Younger brother. Okay. His younger brother. He it looks like his older like brother. Really? So I was uh, younger. Take it on Lucas Brzezeski. Current price, Walker minus 262. Comeback Brzezeski plus 222. Um, There's a part of me that wants to bet the Brzezeski side here. I, I – I, I, I don't think I'll get there uh, at the end of the day. Oh, okay. But (laughs) but here's the thing. Um, Here's the thing, though. Walter Walker is not his brother, right? He's not even almost remotely the same fighter. He's much more of a grappler than Johnny is. Yeah. Um, I actually don't think he's a strike. Like, if they stand for 15 minutes. No, I I agree with you here. I know what you're about to talk about here. His striking is bad. He literally has some random yeah. like overhands and this and that. He has some pop. Don't get me wrong. He can catch Brzezeski, but like if it's extended striking, he has no volume. No, no, and he's easy to hit. Like if they go yeah. stand for 15 minutes, I think I'd actually favor Brzezeski to win this fight. I the problem is, and I'm not even really super super convinced Walker gets the takedowns. I know Carl Williams did, but like Carl Williams, is a much much better wrestler than Walter Walker is. Um, Brzezeski did a decent job managing distance and staying out of the clinch with Budai. I, I could see something similar happening here. The problem for me is twofold. One, Brzezeski's cardio is just like epic levels of dog shit. You know, the guy's three minutes yes. and he's just done. Two, literally in that Carl doesn't... Williams fight. To, to chime in real quick, they're literally that Carl Williams fight, which yeah. again, Carl Williams, better wrestler, but much more of a lightweight heavyweight. Yeah. Much more of yeah. a lighter guy. And to your point, about three minutes in, they both looked cooked. Glimbot saying Brzezeski sub. I would be surprised by that, to be to be quite honest. Um, but maybe 18 to 1. I can't I can't knock the shot. And not and not to knock on that shot, but like Gast Walker went on a round two, round three sub. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I don't think Walker's gas tank is that great either. Um yeah. And, and so it's kind of, it's kind of a weird fight dynamic there because I don't trust Brzezeski if Walker gets on top of him because I think Walker has more tools to fit many more tools to finish from top position than Carl Williams does. Uh, obviously, Carl's kind of just like your classic lay and pray wrestler. Classic gonna, vanilla. Yeah, it's very classic, very what, vanilla. chocolate. In this case, chocolate, very chocolate. We like vanilla. We like vanilla yes, wrestlers, we do. but yes. <laughs> especially white chocolate wrestlers, right? <laughs> yeah, chocolate wrestlers. There you go. <laughs> uh, but I do think he can punish Brzezeski on the ground here, and that's kind of my concern because I do think he has the ability if he can get takedowns to cover the price. But it is it is a big step up for Walker here. Obviously, Brzezeski's got some, you know, has got better experience. But it's kind of the part the conversation you and I have every other week where it's like he hasn't really yet shown me that he's like really capable of beating guys at this level yet. So it's like, do I really want to call it a big step up? I'm not sure. I actually kind of was interested in the decision of Brzezeski here. Plus 650, I think is kind of a, a sneaky look, but I haven't decided if I'll do anything with this yet. I lead to the Brzezeski side, but it's hard to be passionate. Uh, what are your thoughts? Personally, I think if Walker like attempt or how, how am I going to award this? If Walker pers- pursues this fight how he did two fights ago and comes out instantly shooting takedowns and just like that, I think Brzezeski's yeah. fucked. I think he probably gets finished early at a very high clip. 
And I think that's where the fight really, where it comes down to is his game plan with the wrestling. Because like we had touched on, if it stays striking for a long period of time, I just, I think it's probably competitive. Like Brzezinski throws a good bit, but his cardio is just pretty dog shit, similar to Walker. So I think it's an easy pass. I think overs, like you were talking about, might not be a bad look, but I think you're definitely going to sweat a lot in that first round. Yeah, I agree. Um, moving on, cool fight. Ignacio Bahamundes, he is back in the cage after shitting the fucking bed and costing me some money against uh, Ludovic Klein. <laughs> Ignacio Bahamundes, a guy that I used to say never Bahamundes, and I laid the chalk against um, Ludovic Klein. Johnny that was like rock bottom for me last year, literally. It was like back to back fights, Gavin Tucker, Bahamundes, and I was just like ready to go put my head in a blender. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Current price, Bahamundes, big time chalked up, minus 330. Come back on Christos Jagos, plus 270. What do you think, Lags? Well, real quick, and not, I mean, obviously, opinions change of fighters time to time, but like, I'm nev- I'm almost never going to be a Bahamundes guy. And it started out in the, like, when he first came to the USC. I mean, obviously, we were both on McDessie there. Like, I, I think this guy's very, very hittable on the feet. Yeah. So Jagos easily could crack him early, but. His dis- Yago's distance striking really isn't that good. It's a lot of just blitzing in, winging overhands. I don't think it's good. His cardio is not very good. Even if he attempts to wrestle here, he doesn't have the gas for it. So I, I think Bahamunda should be fine, but there's definitely some caution with laying that price. I would never lay massive chalk on Bahamunda's. Yeah, it's funny. I honestly like kind of <sighs> – I kind of wanted to take like a um, contrarian take here and look at like Jago's decision, but it was only plus five fifty, and that's like that's bad. That's yeah. not. That, I need like better. Well, like, okay, uh, is money? I say is his money line like plus two fifty? Yeah, two seventy five. So yeah, I, I was bad. thinking it would be like plus nine hundred or something. You know, it was like oh, I'll right, take a yeah. poke at that. You know, um, but yeah, it's like it's another Christos Jagos fight. It's like we have the same conversation every single time. Ben says Bahamundes live, possibly, but I feel like at this point it's another one of these things where like. I don't think – unless he is, like, horribly compromised and gets 10 aided in round one, I don't think you're going to get better than minus 200 by Mondays after a round. I mean, the market knows what it's doing with Jagos yeah. at this point. We've seen it too many times. It, and even with these fighters in general, like, I know a lot of people were talking about – the one that comes to my mind instantly is the C.J. Vergara. Um, Daniel Vercerda. Santos. Vergara was a favorite Vercerda. after a round. Vercerda. Yeah. yeah. He was, like, minus 150, minus 180 after the first round. Like, what? After 10 aided. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I I just I don't think you're gonna get that great an angle. I mean, obviously, if you do get plus money on Bahamut and Bahamut is live after a round, take it. But I, I just don't right think it's gonna happen. And Jagos, I think, is gonna come out here and do Jagos things early. He's, in my opinion, a better athlete than Bahamundes. I think he hits harder than Bahamundes. He's obviously a much better wrestler than Bahamundes is. I think he's going to have probably have a very very good first round. But as Christos Jagos is wont to do. As he starts to get tired, I think things are probably going to spiral out of control. The one thing I'll say here where I would give Jago something more upside here than like Zell Huber is Zell Huber is like cast iron, like durability. Like that dude is just like, he's got great cardio. He's gigantic and he just doesn't get hurt. Um, and he has you know? jiu-jitsu as well. Much better yeah. than Bahamundes, in my opinion. Whereas Bahamundes, I don't think he's got the best durability ever. I mean, you go back and watch the McDessie fight, man. The dude got horribly hurt by a jab, you know? And John McDessie doesn't hurt anybody with his hands. Um, I don't trust this guy's durability completely. He looked very noodle-like to me against Ludovic Klein. Um, I think... The one the, I I just can't get there on Jagos because it's like at this point I've seen it happen so many fucking times I, I just think he's gonna collapse you know eventually but the reason I was thinking about a contrarian take on the decision is Jagos is probably the best wrestler is the best wrestler Bahamundes has fought you know if, if it turns out like we saw it when he fought Hadzovic now Hadzovic is like the worst to ever do it in terms of defensive yeah. wrestling but. I mean, we did see him win a decision there where he was kind of able to get takedowns, even gassed out, and just kind of chill. And I wouldn't be totally blown away if that happened. But ultimately, I mean, Bob Mundes is a lot younger. He's a lot bigger. Um, as Jago starts to fade, Bob Mundes' volume is probably going to pump like crazy because he does throw a ton of volume. Um, so I lean Bob Mundes to get the finish here on the back end of the fight. I do think the Bahamunde sub is oh, – wow, holy shit, plus 375 now? 
that, that's not yeah. that interesting to me. That's <laughs> that is. I, I, I mean, even Bob Monday's round two plus four hundred, round three plus five hundred, nothing really. No. Sub two plus a thousand, sub three plus twelve hundred. Nothing really moving the needle for me here. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if anything, Jago's decision is probably the prop I like best. But at plus two seventy five, just take Jago's. And I just at, at this point, I'm just not that interested in trusting Jago's to show that he has more cardio past the seven minute mark here. So yeah, I um I think Jago's makes a fight out of it until he doesn't. I will say it's pretty interesting though that Bahamun is like ITDs like minus one fifty, minus one sixty. I don't know. That's just what, me personally. What would you? It's, how it's would you line? Thing. How would you because, line round one? Well, that's the thing that's tough for me because, like, with these type of fights with round two and round, like, you're basing on you're basically banking on Bahamut just to get a round two or round three finish, yeah. and that's so tough for me to be like, all right, minus one fifty, minus one sixty implied pre fight. I want to lay that. Where would I line round one? It's it's tough. I'd to almost say. make Jagos a favorite in round one. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Is that crazy? I, I, I mean, it might not. It might not be, but it's it's tough to say. I think. Yeah, but but that's kind of the thing for me. I I don't know. I have a feeling Jagos is going to show out with better looking cardio than he did against Zell Huber. Just I think Zell Huber is a lot better than Bahamundes is, but we'll see. I, I don't really. I don't think I'm going to get involved though. I'm, I mean, if the line really blows out to like plus three fifty or something, I will. But I I don't think so. Moving on, though, cool fight here, too. Um, this is actually – it's honestly a pretty good card for as many, like, young guys that are on it. We got Morgan, the last Pirate Charrier, coming off of a win in his debut against UFC fighter Manolo Zuccini, uh, taking on Chepe Mariscal. Barely, barely, barely UFC fighter. Barely yeah. UFC fighter. Sorry, I had to chime that in. <laughs> Current price on Chepe or on Morgan, minus 115. Come back on Chepe, minus 105. What do you think here? I like GTD personally, and I'm going to play that after we get off the show here. Minus 170, minus 175. I don't, I don't think there's a ton of finishing upside for either guy personally. I think it honestly would be more so on the Chepe side. I feel like just making this more of like a dog fight. Like I, I, I think it's largely going to be a close fight. Like it's it, a ton of money's been coming in on Chepe, and just because I think Morgan in general just fights, not a I say risk averse really, just fine fighting that very prettyish style where I just feel like. It's probably going to be a close fight that goes the distance. So I'm fine taking GTD minus 170, minus 175. I feel like that honestly could probably – might be crazy saying, but I think this could honestly be like minus 250 GTD. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I I wanted and still kind of want to bet Morgan here, okay. but there's something – so I think Morgan Charrier has like very good skills. He's a good boxer. Yeah. He's a good grappler. He's very durable. He's got good cardio. There's something about him, though, that I just can't put my finger on that's off. You know, like, he's I thought this dude – it's not that he's French, although that's that's bearish in and of itself. It is. But, it is. <laughs> but, you know, this is a guy who five years ago – he's 28 now, which is shocking because he kind of reminds me of – you know those fifth-year redshirt quarterbacks uh, at, like – who have been in somewhere like Miami, whatever, who it feels like they've been in college for 10 years. You're like, wow, how is it Christian Ponder? I feel like Christian Ponder was a Florida State quarterback for a decade. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how it feels like Morgan Charrier, because I've been hearing about him since like 2018. Um, so I'm shocked he's 28. But like the guy would get close to the UFC and then just drop the ball. And there's something about him where like his work rate's not bad. It's not. Uh, but he just yeah. – he fights to the level of his competition, like pretty consistently. You know, he's fought, he's gone to like split decisions with some pretty bad fighters in like the relatively recent past. Uh, he obviously, like, I don't blame him too much. <laughs> I don't blame him too much for losing to like Jordan Vicenich, but and Paul Hughes, but still, those guys will be in the UFC eventually, but they're not here yet. I, I just can't explain it. I, I feel like this guy just doesn't do – he'll never let you get way out in front of him, but he doesn't do enough to really put his foot stamp on rounds. Like, he'll pump the volume if you do. But if you want to have a staring contest with him, he's kind of happy to do that as well. And, and he's not even like a counter striker, which I would normally forgive. He's just kind of – he just kind of takes what you give him. And it bothers me because it means despite the skill set that he has, which is a quite good skill set – 
he's going to constantly be in pretty close fights. And he's taking on a guy in Chepe who who doesn't have more fights, but he's got more high-level experience than Morgan, much more. And Chepe is a absolute fucking dog. You know, the guy is going to come and come and come all fight. Pause. Uh, from- Pause. <laughs> <laughs> From from a uh, from a skill perspective, I think Charrier is clearly the better fighter here. He's the better boxer. I think he's the better wrestler of the two. Um, I think he's the much more durable fighter of the two. So, I mean, that kind of makes me want to bet him. But, like, Chepe is a guy who's just in close fights consistently with, like, good fighters if you don't knock him out. I think Morgan could knock him out. But, again, it's like, I don't know if he will. So, like, I'm kind of with you. I lean, I sort of lean overs, although I don't love paying juice on overs. But I kind of lean that direction. Both guys by decision are plus 200. I don't think either is bad. I still want to bet Morgan. Like, if he goes plus, I will. Just, I do think he's way more skilled. But I, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like it's what? going to be. What? Go ahead. I, was, I, I, I just feel like there. it's going to be a very close fight at a very high clip. Like that's kind of how I feel. Yeah, and then the last thing to add there was I think ends by split in this fight would be perfect. What's the again, number on it? I'd have to look. I'll look. I'll look at DK for you. Here, real I'll quick. pull it up right now. I have it on the board. Have the board up. Let's see. Ready? Let's see if I can find it. Um... It is. Well, I'll, I'll say real quick. So Mariscal by splits six fifty and Sharia by splits eight hundred. What's just fight goes to split? So like four hundred. Ugh. Yeah, Fuck they're really that. onto it with like the fight goes to split in general, but yeah, yeah, you can't you can't play it under five hundred goes to split. No, and most of the time they're onto that. Like with again, like the Calvillo fight that we talked about earlier, I guarantee you it's the same thing. Um. Anyway, though, we move on to the co-main event. Alexander, formerly the Great Hernandez, now the Great Ape, uh, is taking on Damon Elite Jackson. Current price. Hernandez minus 190. The comeback on Jackson plus 165. I have some early Hernandez prices at like minus 165. I think Hernandez minus 200 is like fine though, to be honest. I I, I just honestly, if Hernandez had more um, testicular fortitude, for lack of a better word, uh, I, I would bet it. I would say even minus 200 is value. He he just he's so prone to collapse if things don't go his way. It, it's like. It's even at the minus 165, I bet. It's kind of scary holding that ticket. But what I will say here is like Damon Jackson. I heard um, Liam refer to this about another fight we talked about earlier in the year. But Damon Jackson is a guy who seems like he's just scared of physicality. You know, you kind of saw it in the Dan Ige fight where it's like his best chance in that fight was to crash forward and try to lock up with Ige and get him down. And instead, he kind of was just like, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me, I'm dead. You saw the same thing in the Elliot Taporia fight. You know, the guy just doesn't, when he can't just kind of bully guys he's fighting, he just doesn't do well and he tends to melt really hard. And even when he can bully guys he's fighting, he does tend to melt on the back end of fights. Um, and I don't think he's going to be able to bully Alexander Hernandez. Maybe he can get a takedown or two, but Hernandez is a pretty good wrestler. He's got good get-ups. He's the much better athlete of the two. I think he's a much more durable fighter of the two. He hits a lot harder of the two. And actually, you know, despite the historics with Hernandez, I actually think his cardio has looked a bit better in recent years. You know, he gritted out a tough fight with Jim Miller over 15 minutes. Even his last fight with Bill Algeo, his best round was round three. And that was seemingly a terrible fight for him on paper. Um, And I don't think Jackson, I know Jackson's not capable of putting the fight out there that Algeo did. My view is Jackson's best chance is to get to the back or choke position early and finish him. But I feel like I, I, I feel <laughs> the great ape is such a crazy. It, it, it really, really no, awful. I it's was so say, bad. The, 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 as soon as you were talking about the nicknames, I was chiming. I'm like, it's honestly such a downgrade. Like, how do you go from Alexander the Great to Alexander the Great Ape? Ape? Yeah, that that is <laughs> that, that, that's it's so bad. Ape. But yeah, I I just feel like. He's got such giant hardware edges here. He's the much younger fighter. I think he has the better cardio, and he's just got, in my opinion, much more finishing upside. Like I said, if Alexander Hernandez wasn't so prone to collapsing, um, I'd line him like minus 300, but he is prone to collapsing, so I think minus 200 is fine. What do you think? Yeah, the two things you touched on at the end are the hardware and the power are really just – it's hard to just dissuade, I guess, me in general. Like Jackson, to me, almost – 
has to pull off like a Pat Sabatini esque early finish, like some yeah. kind of like um what's the word for it? dynamic knee, dynamic strike in general to end the fight. Like you touched on with Alex cardio, similar to a guy that we talked about re- talked about recently with Edmund Shabazian, like. The guy's cardio is not that it's not great, but it's more so like when he faces adversity and he's the nail, it just looks awful. He just absolutely yeah. just falls off a cliff type of scenario. And I don't think that's obviously going to happen here with Damon, because if that if that does end up happening, it means that he's largely getting a large amounts of grappling success, which I don't see happening. I will say, do you think Damon Jackson's new haircut is bullish? Might be. It might be. I mean, he, do you he, see that? Well, you see that? You see that thing, That's dude. Nice. He looks like an action star. Like it, 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 he it's. Does. He looks like he should have been in Roadhouse, not Conor McGregor. Honestly, yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, though, we got a rematch in the main event. Another. We are doing rematches left and fucking right lately. It, it is, is really. One, it is a good one. It is a good one, and I have my largest bet of the night on it. We got Brendan Allen. He's taking on Chris Curtis. Current line on Brendan Allen minus two ten. Come back on Curtis plus 180. What are your thoughts, Lex? Well, John, we talked about this fight a lot, I think, up at lead up to this week. And I have a bet on Curtis at plus 170, unit and a half. Um, I think unless you uh, – first and foremost, I'd say, unless you think that his defensive grappling has just pretty much fallen off a cliff, I don't really see how we're getting to this price because, again, we talk about Brandon Allen pretty much every time he fights. We're not big fans of him. His striking is not great. The guy's super hittable. His yeah. wrestling and – Grappling in general, I feel like is more opportunistic. Definitely, he has leveled up, but his wrestling is not anything special in my opinion. Nothing that Curtis hasn't seen before. So, and in five five round fights, like this is perfectly suited to Chris Curtis. We can even talk about like the run Brennan Allen is on, and in my opinion, pretty pretty soft. I mean, we can go fight by fight here. You want to talk about Malcoon? Arguably, ro- Malcoon arguably robbed in that fight. Jocko, I wouldn't say arguably. I would say it was pretty clear. Okay, pretty clearly robbed. Jocko <laughs> might be the best win on the stretch, but again, Jocko, in my yeah, opinion, not a, yeah, not a great fighter in general. On the back nine, for sure. Andre Muniz, we know, not great cardio. Kind of collapsed down the stretch there. Bruno Silva was able to hurt him early in that fight. They were pretty much going tit for tat on the feet, and we know Bruno Silva now, obviously, pretty much a corpse. Um... And then his last fight with Paul Craig. Paul Craig who who cares? I, right, to me, yeah, who cares? Paul Craig was or Brendan Allen's minus four hundred. Paul Craig, not much of a path of victory there in that kind of fight. If so, you can play top game jujitsu, Paul Craig has no chance. Yes, which Brendan Allen yeah. can so very yeah. very easily. So yeah, this is easy. Chris Curtis for me plus one seventy. Honestly, I would honestly go with like the four five decision angle. That might not be bad. I haven't seen the prices for that either, but I might look to add that. I think the most bullish case for Brendan Allen in this fight is that it's short notice for Curtis and that Curtis is 36 years old. Though to me, those, well, well, the first thing there, the the short notice was short notice in the first fight. Now, obviously this is a five rounder. So that, yeah. And Chris Curtis fights short notice all the time. You know, it's, I think this is like his fourth or fifth short notice fight in the, uh, in the UFC, like something crazy like that. He's taken a bunch short notice. Um, but I mean, that is the bull case for Brandon Allen, in my opinion. It's like he's got an eight, he's eight years younger and it's short notice for Curtis. You know, I looked at the fight pretty closely because when it got booked, I was like, how the fuck is this line? Like, this doesn't make any sense at all. And and I know in the first fight, Allen was minus 400, right? So it's like, oh, you know, maybe the market's over adjusting. But it's like, go rewatch the first fight, man. Like, the dude got picked apart and then knocked out viciously at the end of round two. He lost round one unanimously. He got one takedown and Curtis got right back up. Um, Curtis hit him to the body at will. He hit him in the face at will. And so my big question is like Curtis, I am always kind of sketchy about because I still think Chris Curtis so is a guy. He's a guy who, if you play the right game plan, he doesn't have much for you. Like if you stay on the outside and just fire kicks at him and move for 15 minutes or 25 minutes, and that's probably another bullish case here for Allen too. Like in the first fight, Allen had pretty good body kicks in general. So like I think he did that could be to good effect. Yeah, but. but Curtis has like fucking washboard sternum, man. Like he, he's kicking like a, a, a like a stone like a stone pillar. Um, but but like I, th- that's what I wanted to look out for though in his most recent fights. It's like has Allen shown me that he can play kind of an outfighting game for an extended period of time? Because if the answer was yes, then it's like 
Well, then I don't. Then then my interest in Curtis is a lot less because Curtis will kind of accept you, you know, kicking and moving for however long, you know. Um, but Allen hasn't shown any competency to do that. In fact, since I'd argue since their first fight, because I rewatched all his fights since then, I haven't seen many tangible improvements in Allen's game. He's still kind of the same guy, you know. He's a good kicker. He carries good power. Like, he could knock Curtis out. I, I think that's plausible. Um, but he's got no defense standing. That hasn't changed. His grappling is still pretty sloppy. And to your point, he's taking on a guy in Curtis who's got really elite defensive wrestling and whose get-ups, I think, are good enough that it'll be tough for Allen in all likelihood to consolidate a takedown. Um, and it's like on the feet. Curtis, yeah, I mean, you could let you get strikes off on him. But if you come into the pocket with him, like, you look at when Allen boxes in the pocket – the guy just gets touched constantly. And so Curtis is a much better boxer. He's better at working the body. He carries a lot more power than Allen does. Of the two, he is the far, far, far more durable fighter. Um, Dixon mentioned Imavov taking Curtis down. Yeah, I mean, Allen could get a takedown or two, but he's not a great wrestler, you know? Um, but he's the far more durable fighter We've seen this fight, and and Curtis outlanded him sixty to forty over eight minutes and knocked him out. Um, the last thing to add, to add on that fight, at least real quick. I mean, in terms of striking, Imovov versus Allen, Imovov obviously way better striker, but I feel like I mean, Imovov is way better than Allen in general. Yeah, and I think the threat of the takedown in that fight wasn't as large, obviously, as it is here. Like, if Allen doesn't get any takedowns, he's fucked. Like, I think we both agree, and most people would agree, he's probably pretty fucked. Whereas, well, Imovov's standing. What was standing, the other thing I was getting to is, like, Allen, I don't think Allen's cardio is that good. You know, people are ta have talked him up as if he's got, like, he's a cardio beast, but we've seen him slow down before in a couple of fights. I, I don't think he's got great cardio, and Curtis does have pretty good cardio. So, I feel like, all the physical intangibles other than age are kind of on the Curtis side. You know, he's better hardware, hits harder, much more durable, better cardio. Um, he's a good defensive wrestler. Allen's not a great offensive wrestler. You know, we've seen when Allen has fought pocket boxers before, it's generally gone horribly for him. Tristan said, I think there's a small chance Allen out outpoint him. I agree. I think there's a small chance he could too. What I'm saying is, though, I can, I can only go based off of what I've seen, and I haven't seen anything in Allen's tape that suggests that that's a very likely outcome here. And um, even to add on that, even saying like a small chance he could outpoint him, but I, is he out is he out wrestling him too? Like if he's just slightly yeah, outpointing him, like minus two hundred, like I'm not doesn't move the needle for me. Curtis is apparently the mush of the week. Well, we'll see. I like Curtis a lot here, though. I mean, well, honestly, he and let's just well, go. Well, I mean, go. Well, let me let me add real quick there. Wasn't the mush of the week Talbot? recently well let's not i mean i don't want to get into, into, into the back I don't and forth either. here oh i don't either um but i mean you look at even the run that allen's been on like you mentioned jocko's his best win in there sam alvey robbery against malcoon muniz craig silva i mean curtis is fighting guys near the top of the division you know at the end of the day yeah i mean i just trust curtis's physicals more i trust the fact that they fought before more we actually have an idea of how the striking is going to go um I price Curtis at a pick him here. Um, John, let me so, let me ask you this real quick. Without even looking, if you haven't looked, what do you think Brendan Allen inside the distance is? What do I think? I, plus 250? Minus 110. That seems shocking to me. Yeah. Not, not Allen ITD is minus 175 on DraftKings. Bit of, a price, bit, of, bit, bit of a steep price to pay, I think. But I personally, I think that is a great look. Not Allen ITD? No, because I feel like if Allen's winning, it's probably going to be ITD, honestly. Fair. Like, I just don't see him. I just don't see him finishing Curtis at eye clip. So I guess. No, but I, I mean, I Curtis understand has been finished he does before. Win, not much. But... Yeah. All right. I, I mean, I'm not saying Allen can't win a decision. I just feel like right. if Allen. If Allen is really looking like, you know, minus 210 is value, I feel like he finishes at a decent clip here. Um, but, yeah, I like Curtis a lot. Um, I have three and a half units on him, like average price at like plus 190. I think he should be pick him here, um, maybe even a slight favorite. But we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to seeing the fight. Um, you got anything else you want to chat about? We no, it should be a good card. Good card to come back to this weekend. Uh, we got the Final Four also on Saturday. Electric Games. 
Um, not than that, should be good. You? You got anything else, Sean? No, not much. Uh, I'm looking. At, I've been looking at PFL. I haven't bet anything there yet. Um, hold on, I'm pulling up the odds right now. Uh, of of all the spots on there, I lean. I'm considering betting Golm if the price comes in more. I am considering betting Ivanov if it keeps moving out. And that's really it. It's kind of a shit week for betting it. Um, next week, I'll be doing a show for PFL. I, like I said, I was going to do one tomorrow, but I'm flying to Mexico in the morning. Caitlin Clark lags. Would you or wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like I, like, I would too, you know, of course. Yeah, pick in between the two. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, the better right, question fine. is what wouldn't we do? That's true. Okay, we got to we got to close out the segment here with something like that. How about All right, John, Melissa Mullins, Nora Corn. Hey, Dix Insiders asking if I had kicked out a boardwalk hall for smoking cigs in the bathroom. That was not me. That was not oh, me. Oh man. Jeez. Um, guys, well, please drop was... a like and subscribe. Yeah. Mullins or Cornhole? Who would you rather? Mullins or Cornhole? Let me pull up. Let me pull up the pictures on Tapology real quick. Really you know, deep I dive. No, I would here. say Norma GDR, but I mean, I, I know you're going to go Norma. That's. Norma. I mean, that's a stupid. That's, that's a stupid one. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. One. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, Mullins, I think. Yeah, definitely Mullins. Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. see uh, a last thing to talk about real quick here? Did you see uh, Alex Hernandez and Damon Jackson's like their interviews kind of going back, back and forth talking about each other? No. So ja- Jackson was asked pretty much like, why, like, why don't you like him? This and that, like, he just kind of doesn't like his face. This and that. He's talking some old <laughs> new Damon Jackson. I mean, new Damon Jackson. I mean, <laughs> but no, kidding. Um, but no, he's basically talking about like how his, he just doesn't like his face. Doesn't like all the shit he's talking about with, with cowboy back in that fight and then alex like heard the interview was basically like oh like or like i should say the the reporter told him about the interview the que- how damon answered the question he's like wow that's kind of homosexual of him to think about that like five six years down the road <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh but anyway guys that'll do it for tonight <clears throat> thanks for coming out next week we'll be back well we'll be back at 7 p.m next week yes we will ufc 300 big card Excited to break it down. Again, please, guys, if you're in the stream, drop a like, subscribe. We'd appreciate it. And good luck on your bets this week. We will have a guest next week. We'll see you guys next weekend. Peace.